Last round, Jan. Pretty bad. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That was me at the range experiencing why they call the original Armalite AR7 the Jamomatic. It jammed every single magazine I put in it. Didn't matter what kind of ammunition I used. And so when you think about having a survival rifle where your life is down to what you can do with seven to 14 rounds of 22 long rifle, the original Armalite AR7 left a lot to be desired. But I think it's a pretty cool piece of history because 50 years ago, Armalite introduced civilians to this idea of a breakdown 22 long rifle for having in different places where you, you can't hold a complete rifle. And 50 years later, Ruger followed suit, came to their senses, producing their 1022 takedown, which is a much, much better rifle than the original Armalite AR7. Henry Repeating Arms makes an AR7 that is loosely based on the original Armalite design, and it's also a much better rifle. But I still want to show you a bit about this because, like I said, it is a cool piece of history. It's something that's been in my family since it was purchased new over 50 years ago. But you're going to see why it's both a cool thing as well as something you don't want to rely upon in a survival situation. And that's coming up next on Twang and Bang. Though often called the Air Force Survival Rifle, the Armalite AR-7 was actually designed for the civilian market by Eugene Stoner himself. The receiver, barrel, and magazine all store in the butt stock and assemble very easily without any tools. Aluminum was used wherever they could get away with it, though the barrel does have a steel liner. This means that the entire rifle weighs less than two and a half pounds and it actually floats. The Armalite AR7 comes with one eight round magazine, though I have only ever been able to load seven rounds in the magazine that I have with my rifle. Armalite manufactured the AR7 from 1959 to 1973 when they sold the design to Charter Arms. The barrel has a tab indexing it with the receiver. It actually presses up against the bolt and the spring pushes it from being fully seated. Of course, you tighten it all the way down and that pushes the bolt rearwards. The locking collar does have a tendency to shoot loose after a few magazines, so you do have to keep tightening it. The bolt has an extendable charging handle, but it has no detent holding it into either the closed or open position. The thumb safety locks very positively in both the safe and firing positions. The rear peep sight of the original AR7 is adjustable for elevation, but it lacks the additional aperture you find on newer versions. The buttstock is actually offset for a right-handed shooter, and it attaches to the receiver with a captured bolt. The magazine release can either be operated with your trigger finger or with the thumb of your hand as you pull out the magazine. This AR7 is far from watertight. The end cap is extremely loose and it lacks an O-ring, though that groove looks like it should hold one. But water is going to get right in there if I were to try and float it. It's a pretty bad failure to feed. The round is all bent up in there. Failure to feed. So this is the kind of failure that I always get. It fails to make it all the way up the feed ramp, getting caught before entering the barrel, and then the round is all bent up in there. That's what happens, and it typically happens on the last or next to last round for me. And here's the source of the headache. The magazines actually have the feed ramp built into them. Though this facilitates the design of the removable barrel, it puts too much of the reliability of the rifle on a stamped metal magazine. You can see the difference next to this magazine from my Savage FVSR bolt action. This means you have to be really careful holding the rifle. If you put pressure on the magazine, it's going to change the feed angle. 
This is not an emergency combat weapon. This is an emergency squirrel gun at best. If you think you're going to stop armed pursuers behind enemy lines with a 7-round magazine of 22 long rifle, you're probably good enough to stop them with a pointy stick and your paracord safety bracelet. I think they named it the Explorer because ultimately you're going to be exploring your other options for survival. So is it an accident that Ruger designed a case that fits both their 1022 and the Armalite AR-7 perfectly? It zips up closed and you can carry both guns to the range in the same compact case. Those guys are some kind of magic magician or something. I think that's pretty cool. But as cool as the Armalite AR-7 is, it is just a history piece. If you find one to buy and you want to have one just to have, that's fine. But if you're actually looking for a rifle that you want to rely upon in a time of need, you don't want the original Armalite. You want one of the Henry Repeating Arms versions that have a lot of improvements over this design. Of course, my preference is the Ruger 1022 takedown because, quite frankly, I want more than seven rounds in a magazine if my life is depending upon what I can do with a, a 22 long rifle. And I don't really have a need for something that floats. But if you want to learn more about the Armalite AR-7 and the various rifles that followed in its footsteps, be sure to click in the video description below. You'll find a link there. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. Now more than ever, YouTube needs to know that you like firearms-oriented programming. And be sure to click up here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.